All right, the last transfer function that we're going to look at for a single order transfer function will be a right half plane zero. Here we have h of s is equal to s minus omega z. So you can see the sign change instead of s plus omega z, it's s minus omega z. And of course, if we look at this in the frequency domain, h of j omega is equal to j omega minus omega z. And like before, we can find our magnitude of h of j omega and our phase of h of j omega. Here, the magnitude response is equal to 20 log 10 of the quantity 1 plus the quantity omega over omega z squared. You can see that this is approximately 0 dBs until omega equals omega z, and then it increases at 20 dBs per decade increase in omega. The angle is equal to the arc tangent of minus omega over omega z. Here we can see that this is approximately zero when omega is small. When omega equals omega z, it's approximately minus 45 degrees. And when omega is much bigger than omega z, it's approximately minus 90 degrees. So here we can see the phase shift is opposite of that for the left half plane zero. Let's do our Bode plots. All right, so the amplitude response is the same as it was for the left half plane zero. In other words, it starts at zero dBs and when it hits the pole frequency, our straight line approach says that it increases at 20 dBs per decade. For the angle, we know that the phase shift is going to start at zero degrees. Exactly at the zero frequency, it's going to be equal to minus 45 degrees. And at very high frequencies, it's going to be equal to 90 degrees. And again, we typically do our straight line approximation for this, even though we know that the real shape for this is an arc tangent. All right, so there is our frequency response in a Bode diagram, or a Bode plot. Let's now look at the step response. So here we have y of s is equal to s minus omega z, z. I'm actually going to normalize this times 1 over s. And if we find y of t, it's equal to the inverse Laplace transform of y of s. This is equal to one over, or sorry, I should say delta of t over omega z minus h of t. Now if we plot this, we have our input step At x of t, we're going to have an impulse that's equal to delta t divided by omega z. And then we're going to have a negative step. So we should get an output that looks something like this. It will go up a little bit and then down and then stay constant. All right, so we've now examined the frequency response and step response for our four possible cases for single order systems. That is a system that has only a left half plane pole, only a right half plane pole, only a left half plane zero, or only a right half plane zero. Now it's important to note that most systems have more than one of these com components. In other words, they have more than one pole or more than one zero. And the only real restriction we have is that for our system to be stable, it cannot have any right half plane poles. All right, we're going to stop there.